Hey guys, Alex here with this clubhouse. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the differences between a conventional wall system and a mass wall system, or um, otherwise known as an earth wall or a cob wall. Um, also applies to uh, your straw bale, your straw clay, your hempcrete, or your rammed earth. Uh, so what I have here is a small demonstration model. This shows the different layerings of a conventional stick frame wall system. So you have usually six or seven layers for a conventional wall in a home. Uh, almost all homes, at least in the United States, are built this way. This is what your wall consists of. So on uh, the exterior, the outside of the building, you have the cladding. And this is like a finish. Uh, it also protects the wall. Uh, sometimes it's wood like this. Sometimes it's more of a, a poly or like a plastic that looks like wood. Now underneath, there's a water resistant barrier or a plastic type sheeting. Okay, and this is um, a major part of this system, and um, it's also where a lot of failure happens in this system. So the goal of really any kind of wall, uh, but a conventional wall, is you try to keep water out of the wall, and whatever water does penetrate or get into the wall, you want that water to be able to get back out of the wall and release itself from the wall. So this plastic water water barrier prevents water, in theory, from going into the wall. So it can potentially get through the cladding, but it's going to be stopped by the plastic. That's the hope for this kind of system. Now behind the plastic you have the sheathing. This is usually plywood or OSB. And in the middle, you have your insulation. And then on the interior of the building, you have drywall, typically. And then you have a synthetic paint. So let me talk about this system first before I go into uh, the benefits of a cob or a mass wall system. So this system has all kinds of failure. Um, we know that uh, your modern stick frame home is, is just a breeding ground for mold most of the time, and I'll explain why. So during construction, a lot of this plastic gets put up too early, sunlight degrades it, um, it gets damaged during construction, little tears, all the nails that are put through the cladding, uh, they could potentially tear the plastic as well. Uh, so there's all kinds of uh, possibilities for water penetration through this plastic. Um, and uh, once it gets behind the plastic, then it can't get back out, or it has a very hard time. So all that moisture tends to build up behind the plastic and totally defeats the purpose of this water resistant barrier. So what happens, and this happens a lot, this is quite common to happen, you would think it would protect and keep all the water out, but they rarely do. So what happens is that water gets behind the plastic, it saturates the sheathing, and then that water eventually moves to your insulation. In most modern conventional homes are built with fiberglass type insulations that uh, they mold easily and they'll saturate with water and they don't re-release that water easily. So then it goes through your insulation. Then probably the worst part is it gets to your drywall and that drywall just soaks up water like a sponge. This stuff, drywall is just 
horrendous breeding ground for mold. Now it could re-release some of that water through the drywall to the interior, but the extra problem is people use synthetic paints, uh, oil-based or synthetic paints. These paints block uh, water vapor from going through materials. They're not vapor permeable. So this whole system has many points of failure and water tends to just uh, build up in these walls once it gets a penetration point and that water just can't find a way to re-release itself. Uh, also wood, it's, this is also a stud frame wall. Wood does not hold a lot of extra moisture well like uh, an earth wall unfired clay would do. So wood uh, can more, much more easily get to a point where uh, the water builds up to a dew point and then it, uh, it's, the wood is oversaturated and it starts to mold. So this is, this is how all the homes in the United States are built. Um, now here I've got just a little block of cob just to demonstrate because I didn't want to put a big piece of cob here. This is a cob wall. This is how simple a cob wall is. There's literally three layers. Your cob wall and then you have the interior layer of plaster and the exterior layer of plaster. And as we know you want to use a vapor permeable plaster such as lime or earth based plaster. And so that is that is a system when you have a cob wall or a mass wall system. It's that simple. Um, and like I said, uh, clay, soil, lime, these all have the ability to absorb, uh, absorb and desorb moisture very well. So the water can't penetrate into the wall and uh, reach that dew point and condensate and uh, compromise the integrity of the wall. So this ability for a cob wall to absorb and desorb moisture is called hydric buffering. So it's a great way to keep a home, uh, home's humidity and indoor moisture uh, self-regulated or naturally regulated without any kind of mechanical system to do it. Um, a wall like this has no ability, uh, has no hydric buffering ability like that. So you have to rely on plastics and vapor barriers uh, to regulate that. So that's one huge advantage to a cob wall is the hydric buffering ability. Uh, one thing I've noticed working down here in the southeast of the United States, it really does work. Um, inside a cob building uh, during the high heat and humidity of summer you just don't have that problem inside like you would in a conventional home. So this is really important in my opinion because the leading cause of building failure is moisture penetration and uh, moisture penetration usually happens uh, between different materials where they um, com conjoined or where they're adjacent. So like between your foundation and your walls or your walls and your roof. Um, but your walls get a lot of moisture penetration uh, with a system like this. With a system like this, you don't really worry about moisture penetration um, because a wall system like this with your vapor permeable plasters on it is meant and able to absorb that moisture and then re-release it. So it's a totally different system, um, but it makes a lot of sense. So for any of you out there, if you have uh, mold sensitivity issues, I hope you paid attention to this video because uh, this might be your solution to finding a healthy home. The ability of Cobb uh, to have that hydric buffering is extremely important 
for creating a optimal home in my opinion so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something if you have any questions please leave them below in the comments and I'll try to get back to those soon thanks for watching